Welcome to Real Food. And today um, I wanted to talk about this um, curry. This one is called Golden Curry and it's a Japanese um, um, curry brick which um, you can use to make delicious curry. And um, what I want to say is that there are lots of different curries. There's Indian curries, there's some other Asian curries, and there's Japanese car uh, curries. And um, Japanese cu curries tend to be um, a lot milder. They're not as hot and not as spicy as, let's say, some Indian varieties, which I find sometimes too spicy and too hot for my personal taste. But with Japanese curries, um, it's um, it has been... Um, quite difficult to actually achieve the same um, um, if you if you want to cook it yourself at home it's not always been very very easy and I was under the impression that um, perhaps you, you can only get it from a Japanese restaurant and at the moment we are under this um, restriction we we are in lockdown in London but what I discovered is that Japanese are making these um, um, bricks, curry bricks, which you can use very easily at home, and you can make your own delicious curry. Um, I've not actually tried these before, um, but um, they sound really amazing. And apparently these curry blocks made a, a, a revolution in Japan itself. Um, whereas again, it was very similar. You, you'd have to go or spend a long time cooking, preparing these curries before... Um, you could actually eat that delicious curry meal um, and then they introduced these prefabricated blo bl blocks and bricks. I'll show you what they look like here. Here they are. Uh, and then you um, you can use these curries to make your own homemade um, delicious Japanese curry. And um, here's what they look like. I've just opened one. They smell like a typical Japanese curry. Um, it's a delicious, delicious curry smell, and um, these bricks you can cut them into or, or more pieces, and you can make your own delicious curry. So what I've also done, I've just prepared um, uh, chopped vegetables. So I'm boiling my vegetables, and I've got onions, I've got some potatoes, carrots in there. So you have to cook these first. Um, you have to um, boil them, cook them. And then you um, apparently you add those uh, curry blocks, and you can add some coconut milk or cream, and it will be turned into that typical Japanese curry um, uh, filling for your rice. And um, and it's um, this wonderful Japanese curry meal at home. And to be honest, it's not that difficult. You know, all I had to do here is to chop my vegetables, onions, and um, cabbages, carrots. Um, there are some carrots at the bottom, so I'm going to boil them, and um, um, I'm going to add these curry blocks, and I'll see what it looks like um, in a minute. So with these curry blocks, I think I'm going to um, basically divide them into smaller sections, and then add them into my into my vegetables. So here's my curry block divided into sections. This is what they look like, and I'm now going to add these to my um, to my vegetables. So here we are. So here's one. I think this one will take two of these blocks. I'm not going to use all of it. I don't want it to be too spicy, but I think for this large pot, um, I could use two. So. I suppose these will melt in a few moments. Yeah, they do melt very quickly. So I, I think they do have some kind of um, coconut oil in them because they melt like chocolate, really. And you can see how quickly they start melting. So, um, and these curries, all these wonderful spices will be soaked into my vegetables. I don't know how salty this is. I'm going to try now. So, uh, mm, there's actually some salt in this block. So it's good that I didn't add a lot of salt in, into my vegetables. So, and it does taste already. If you try a little bit of this paste, it tastes like a typical Japanese curry. 
um, it's not too spicy but it's got all of the right ingredients there so and yeah and they've got salt so be careful with salt don't add too much into your vegetables before you start this process because it might be too salty in the end if you use the curry blocks so these curries are actually now melting nicely they are melting literally like chocolate so i'm going to see these curries um, melting all over and i'm thinking to add um to add cream in addition to because at the moment i've only got water and vegetables and now i've got these curry blocks melting but to make it a proper proper curry i think i need to add um, i need to add some cream yeah that will turn it into a real um, slightly thicker creamier curry because from what i tasted these curry blocks although there's some lovely oil in there something like maybe coconut um, they don't have cream this is literally just spices all the all the right ingredients spicy ingredients like curry spices um, uh, are pressed into these blocks so you do need to add other ingredients to make it into a proper curry so and I think um, cream will work really really well here so let me get my cream I've got this delicious cream this clotted cream so I think that will work really well so let's see yeah this looks amazing it looks really good so I'm thinking I should use another spoon because that spoon is really covered in curries and uh, soups so I'm going to use this one and let's add some more I think my soup will take some more curry, or more, more cream. So that should be enough to start with, I think. Let's see what, what it becomes. How creamy it gets. Well, now you can see immediately it's becoming creamy and... Uh, beautiful so yeah I'm, I'm beginning to like the smell and look but I think I might need um, a bit more cream let me just see well I think my curry block is still melting yeah I think more cream definitely more cream so let's add some more Okay, I think that's okay for now. Um, let's see how it works. Okay. Hmm. This does taste delicious. Actually, cream makes it um taste even better. So this I'm going to leave to simmer on mild heat and this will become my vegetable vegetable curry form and then I'll prepare some rice and it will be my Japanese curry meal my Japanese vegetarian vegetable curry so altogether it's not very complicated obviously providing you've got that beautiful block that golden curry block they do come from Japan and I bought this one from a Japanese center so look at this this is going to be really nice so after about five minutes my curry has become very thick so it does now look like a typical Japanese um, vegetable curry so I'm really really impressed and um, 
it tastes absolutely fantastic too. I tried a little bit of it and um, I'm really pleased. So it is proper Japanese curry. So all I have to do now is to um, prepare some rice, some um, steamed boiled rice and um, I'm good to go. This is absolutely amazing. So I'm really, really impressed and um, highly recommend this um, beautiful golden curry. Japanese golden curry blocks. Yeah, very good. So now I'm cooking my rice and the first thing to do with rice, I'm going to use white rice, is to wash it very very thoroughly. And you see this cloudy water. Um, you, you know, you need to wash it really really thoroughly for a variety of reasons. First of all because um, rice needs to absorb a little bit of water before cooking then it will become softer and easier to cook and secondly there's a lot of pollutants which you really do want to remove and the advice here is that you have to rinse it s uh, several times up to ten times in order to make water look really clear so that will remove various residues um, um, dirt and potentially also some dangerous chemicals like um, fer fertilizers or pesticides or, or uh, there have been reports that um, rice can contain some arsenic which is present in the soil so all that you really want to wash it off before um, it gets into your food so look how muddy the water becomes so this is my first um, uh, rinse and I'm going to rinse it at least five ten times um, before before it's cooked so so this water is now really clear and as you can see so I've done several rounds of rinsing and this is now perfect and clear water so when you achieve this clear water after rinsing that's a good sign that your rice is now ready for cooking and you need to also make sure that you've got the right proportion of a rice, amount of rice to water. It's typically, if it's white rice like this, um, it's one to three. So one cup of, um, of water to uh, one cup of rice to three cups of water. So, um, so I'm going to do that and put it on heat. So my rice is now on heat. And also don't forget to add some salt. Um, you can add some salt later if you want, or you can add salt before cooking um, so it's cooked in salty water. And also what I like doing with my rice, um, I like adding um, spices. I like, um, but special spices, spices that actually work um, for rice. And in my case, I, I add typically things such as lemongrass, it adds this gentle, beautiful flavor to my rice. And um, I add um, black pepper, just a touch. And I also add um, a lime leaf. A lime leaf is typically added to rice in Thai cuisine. And I, I discovered it uh, from Thai um, restaurants. You know, I, I found Thai, fragrant Thai rice, always so unusually fragrant and so um, interesting and aromatic that I actually asked them a few times what, how they cook it and they told me that they add this um, leaf of um, lime so lime leaf and I, I now do the same so I've got these um, spices here and this leaf of lime tree makes it absolutely amazing well, I've got also bay leaves here. You can add bay leaf, but, but bay leaf doesn't... Mm, I'm not sure bay leaf doesn't work as well with rice. So I prefer... Yeah, these are my lime leaves. Okay, so so a few leaves of from lime tree. It's, it's a special fragrant um, lime um, tree. Um, I think it's called kaifi, kaifi or kaifi or... It's a special lime tree. So um, so I've now I've got that in my, in my pan, and I also will add some um, some lemongrass there, and um, some pepper. So this will be really fragrant, really beautiful rice. Okay, let's see how my rice is doing. My rice is nearly there, so the water is practically all evaporated. Or absorbed by the rice 
oh look at this and you can see my um um my spices my my lime my lime tree leaves my lemongrass so my rice is nearly there i think in fact i can now switch off heat and uh, my rice is pretty much ready so i've just switched off heat and um my curry is also um, ready here it is so and my rice so so this is all looking good i actually can't believe that um i've made um i've, I've cooked myself this beautiful japanese curry um dish I, I i was under the impression that you know you could never make this at home and you could only get it from a nice japanese restaurant but here we are beautiful um japanese curry vegetable curry rice dish um and really it didn't take that long um chopped vegetables um well obviously i had this block the curry block um which i added and um, rice really easy uh, unbelievable i'm so impressed i highly recommend i hope you guys all try it and enjoy it and do share your own tricks uh, how you can make delicious food um, which you thought previously you could only get from some um, expensive restaurant or, or somewhere else and you could never make it at home and how and and share your experiences how you tried and made it work um, because I'm so impressed I'm gonna be trying um, this now with other dishes more complicated dishes